Hello everyone, this is the DeSmogCast, where we clear the PR pollution that clouds climate science and shed some light on the biggest environmental stories of the week that you need to know about. I'm Farron Cousins, your host, and joining me this week, I have Justin McCulka, investigative journalist and research uh, uh, contributor at DeSmogBlog.com. Justin, thanks for being with us today. I, I wanted to just kind of jump right into it. Uh, uh, for many months now, you've been covering the uh, big oil's bomb trains uh, zipping all over the country. And one of the things you and I have talked about in the past is the massive amount of lobbying that the uh, uh, rail industry does in Washington, how they're a very powerful lobby that not very many people pay attention to. But now that we're seeing all of these bomb trains out there, uh, their lobbying is, is kind of coming to light. It, it's a big part of the story. Uh, just a few days ago, you uncovered a, a, a very large piece of this puzzle. Go ahead and lay it out for us. Now that we have the new oil by rail regulations and we see how successful the lobbyists have been, uh, it, it sheds more light on the issue. But uh, the story that uh, I was writing about last week really comes about from following this issue for over the past year and, and wondering why uh, in the proposed regulations and throughout the discussion, there hadn't been uh, any uh, in the proposed regulations, there was nothing requiring the oil companies to remove the natural gas liquids from the oil, a process called stabilization. We've uh, you know, talked about it before, written about it on the smog bug over the past year. And it's, it's a known process that works. And it, it is the one thing that would address the whole issue of these being bomb trains. I mean, the reason we know that of them as bomb trains is because when they crash, there are these massive explosions. That is due to the natural gas liquids because the oil companies, uh, the producers, before they put it in the trains, have not removed the natural gas liquids. And uh, through a freedom of information request uh, to uh, North, the North Dakota regulators, we begin to see a lot more of the behind the scenes story about why this hasn't happened. And uh, we know that the White House uh, had instructed the regulators at the federal level to push this issue off to the North Dakota regulators. And uh, we learned that a couple months ago from a, a stories on Reuters. Uh, but what these emails show then, as soon as the proposed regulations came out last year, which did not address this issue of the natural gas liquids in the oil, the Department of Energy and other uh, representatives, people within the White House, immediately were communicating with North Dakota on their proposed regulations, uh, which have since come out and which also do not require uh, the oil producers to do anything they're not currently doing. So. The, the, throughout this process, it's been, it's been uh, following it, it's been curious why nothing has been happening. Now we see a lot has been happening behind the scenes and the oil lobbyists and rail lobbyists uh, have gotten what they wanted. So what, uh, uh, what exactly was in those emails that you got? Uh, what, what information did we find out from those? Well, the, 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 the interesting thing, the main contact it appears from the Department of Energy, who it should be noted, are not the regulators who are writing the regulations, but who have become involved in this issue. But it was a woman, uh, Paula Gant, who uh, what, prior to her job at the Department of Energy was an oil and gas industry lobbyist. Uh, so she got hired into the DOE and um, these emails, she was communicating with the top regulator in North Dakota, uh, also a former oil uh, industry person, and just talking about how the White House had a keen interest in uh, the regulations that might uh, impact uh, the oil being produced in the field. So uh, obviously there was, uh, you know, the Department of Energy interested, the White House is interested and, um, and, and working directly with the North Dakota regulators behind the scenes. Uh, and again, the end result and what we saw in the regulations that were announced on Friday uh, was that in the final regulations, uh, the oil companies will not be uh, required to address this issue. So uh, they've gotten a pass, I and mean, this is what they wanted and what all the lobbying was for, and it worked. So as, as it stands right now with these new regulations that uh, are, I, I'm assuming, effective, if not now, in the very near future, does anything at all change? Is there anything positive with these new regulations? Uh, you know, I mean, anything at all that we can be optimistic about? Well, uh, when the regulations came out, uh, the obviously you have the industry friendly sources uh, calling them strict and, uh, you know, really lauding them as making people safer. But uh, the comments made by Senator Cantwell uh, of Washington State uh, on Friday after they came out 
I think really sum it up well, where uh, she said that this basically allows the oil trains to continue to roll on. And this is really just uh, reinforces the status quo, which obviously there are serious safety issues. Uh, but last year when the proposed regulations came out, the lobbyists from the oil industry, uh, the American Petroleum Institute, and the rail industry, the American Association of Railroads, put out a joint message saying there are two things they would not accept in the regulations. Um, and obviously they have a lot of confidence in their ability because just to even be making statements like that uh, prior to the regulations. Uh, but they said, we will not uh, accept any sort of uh, stabilization uh, or treating the oil before it goes in the rail cars. And we won't also no speed limits. And the regulations that came out on Friday, those are the two things that uh, were, were missing, you know, and, and so a big win for both oil and rail. The, the rail industry had already voluntarily uh, uh, agreed to speed limits. The ones they voluntarily agreed to were in, in the new regulations, but that means those trains can move at 50 miles per hour through um, most areas of the country. And it's been proven that if they derail at that speed, it's, it's especially since the oil is not going to be treated, uh, it's, it, they, they're going to, we're going to see more of those um, large explosions that we, we've seen uh, whenever one of these Bakken oil train crashes. That's very disappointing, but it's the same story that we've seen so, uh, so many times, just time and time again, is just the industry, and in this case, really the government too, which is now just an extension of industry, putting profits over safety. Uh, these new regulations don't even address the two main problems that could potentially solve the overall issue of the bomb trains. Uh, Justin, Fortunately, we're out of time. Everybody can go to desmogblog.com, uh, read up on this story by Justin, uh, several stories actually in the last few days. Uh, great material, Justin. Thank you for joining us this week. <laughs>